Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will tell you everything you need to know to become a freelance model and actor in Japan. I made a video back in 2019 about the same subject. It got a lot of comments, a lot of positive comments, so I decided to make a new and updated version of it. Uh, why? Because, well, two years have passed, uh, major events happened, like the coronavirus, which had an impact and still has a major impact on the industry right now, especially after the Olympics. So I decided to make a new video. As always in the video, I'll put timestamps, so feel free to skip to whatever part you are interested in. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and activate the bell to help the channel grow. Let's start. Guys, first I want to talk about the word modeling. I think a lot of people get scared and confused by this word. Uh, right away they think about fashion and, and catwalk, but it's not really the case. It really depends on the agency you're registered in. So modeling in Japan, you can be an actor where you can play in uh, movies, TV shows, uh, commercials. You can also work as an extra where you're just in the background most of the time. You can also do uh, photo shoots, so you work as a model. Photo shoots for uh, social media, for um, magazines, websites, and so on. So you see, modeling is a very broad term. So I want to say to people to not get scared by this word. Uh, it really depends on the uh, agency you're registered in. Uh, it depends on what the client is looking for. You don't need to have the perfect face or body. But of course, if you want to be like an international model, professional model, then they have some requirements where you need to be for males. I think you need to be... Uh, about like 185 you cannot be uh, shorter you need to be quite of lean like a very nice face but that's only if you want to do fashion purely fashion and catwalk but um, if you want to do the other kind of work you don't need that <laughs> What I want to talk about next is the types of agencies. So I'll say there are three categories. You have the first one, just like professional model, international model, where you do uh, mainly fashion and catwalk, and it's everywhere in the world. Uh, the second one is like semi-pro agency, where you will be based in Japan. You do like probably like 80, 70 percent, 70, 80 percent of your work in Japan, but sometimes you will get contracts in uh, in South Korea, in China, in Thailand, and so on. And then you have the freelance models, so freelance agency where they kind of like everybody is inside and then they have different types of jobs, uh, like acting, like I told you, uh, working as an extra, doing some photo shoots or website magazines and so on. And you'll be working mainly in Japan. Maybe sometimes you go abroad, but it's pretty rare to be honest. So I guess the key questions everybody is going to ask me is like, how do you find those agencies in uh, Japan, well, it's very easy. You just have to type on Google uh, modeling agencies in uh, Japan or in Tokyo. But to make it easier for you guys, I made a list uh, in the description with all the agencies and per categories. I, maybe I might have forgotten some, but um, at least you don't need to look on Google. You can just look at the description and then you can click on every link and they will be categorized. So just for this, Put a thumbs up. The third point would be applying to uh, the agencies. So how do you apply? Do you call them? Do you send them an email? Do you go to the office? So before COVID, you could call the agency and then make an appointment, go to the office. But right now with COVID, uh, the best thing is to send an email with about like maybe five photos of you, uh, small descriptions, why you want to be a model, why you want to be an actor. And then they will... If they like your photos, if they like your description, they will send you back an email. So I would say send an email like, for example, uh, model registration, your name in brackets, for example, a little bit about your personality, uh, maybe your work, what uh, brings you, what do you want to be a model, what do you want to be an actor. Uh, maybe five photos or five, six photos of you, especially with a headshot because they really want to see your, your face and maybe the photos with different type of clothes. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. And then you send the email and then you wait for their reply. Point number four, job offers. So after registering to one or multiple agencies, they will start sending you uh, emails with job offers. They usually they consist of, you know, um, the role, um, the audition date, the uh, shooting dates, the pay. And then uh, that's pretty much it. And... Uh, make sure to not share any information from 
that email from those emails because um, they can sue you. So when you register to the agencies, then they made you sign a contract that you cannot share any information from their emails. So this is like uh, private. This is from the client. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And all you have to do is reply to them with uh, three options. So you have number one, which is first keep. So you 100% you can go to the audition and the shooting. You have the second option is second keep where you're not sure. You don't really know your schedule yet. Maybe you have multiple jobs on the same day. You're not sure. So you can put second keep. I usually choose second keep, especially with uh, if there's a job with an audition because I want to see how the audition goes. And after I might change to first keep. And then the third option is NG where it means no good. You just cannot go to the audition or the shooting date or both of them. Uh, one thing, so just make sure to really check your schedule because if you say um, first keep for you know two different clients on the same day, and they end up they end up like really uh, choosing you, both of the companies choosing you, then you'll be in very very big trouble uh, because if you say first keep to the um, agency and to the client they expect you to be there if they choose you if you change it's a big big no no so please avoid doing that so like i said i usually choose um second keep uh why do i do it is because sometimes like um maybe an agency will send me a job offer if i say first keep and maybe i'll receive other offers on the same day with a better pay with a better role suited for me if i choose first keep right away that'll be i'll be stuck pretty much i cannot i cannot change the date so I usually go with second keep, maybe go to the audition, see the role, uh, see uh, how many people uh, uh, go there. Because sometimes if you have like, if you receive uh, an offer from uh, five different agencies, you can expect people, a lot of people to go there. And if there's only one role, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be very difficult. So I'd rather uh, choose second keep. <laughs> Uh, so now let's talk about the challenges uh, being a model in Japan. So number one is the visa. So you will need to renew your visa every year or every three years. Uh, it's quite annoying to be honest. Uh, you need to be really good or have a lot of jobs for modeling agencies to sponsor your visa. If uh, let's say a modeling agency don't sponsor your visa, you need to kind of get a visa from somewhere else. Uh, like for example teaching. But then if you renew your visa then uh, usually they ask you to teach full-time or to work full-time and then you have less time for modeling. So for example, for my own experience, when I first came to Japan, I had a working holiday visa. It's a one-year visa, non-renewable. Um, and I wanted to stay in Japan, but then I started with teaching and also modeling, but modeling at the beginning was a little bit slow. So I couldn't get the visa from one of the modeling agencies. So I got a, a visa sponsorship from uh, teaching, uh, well, a teaching company, but I had to work full time, so I had less time for modeling. And then, then you get caught uh, in in doing less jobs, and you are less available. And that's what happened with 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 the visa. So the visa, it's it, it's really annoying in Japan, to be honest. So the second challenge is to be a freelance model. Uh, so keep in mind, you're at the bottom of the food chain. Uh, client will usually reach for you know professionals or semi-pro models and if i don't know the negotiation didn't go well or they don't agree on something then they will go to freelance models where everybody is there but sometimes freelance agencies they sponsor some models so they are exclusive models so they will have priorities so for example if you go to uh, an audition and then the audition went well and you're shortlisted shortlisted means you are one of the finalists but if in the finalists there is an exclusive models like a models that they need to they sponsor the visa, that usually most of the time the exclusive models will get the the job. Unfortunately, so that's kind of a, it's kind of unfair and sad. But that's that's part of the game. The thing with uh, freelance agencies is that all they want their exclusive models to get the job. Or if the exclusive model doesn't get the job, then they don't really care who gets the job, right? It's it's their job is to find someone for the job. But if you go with, I don't know, a premium agency like Summit Pro Professionals, then they want you to have the job. So because in the freelance agencies, there's so many people that they cannot take care of everybody. So if you uh, have experience modeling or acting, you should try to go with 
uh, semi-pro premium agencies, international agencies, rather than freelancing. But freelancing is just a hobby or um, you're just starting, you don't have a lot of experience, then go with freelance. So challenge number three, transportation. So uh, when you go to auditions, transportations are not paid and they can add up really quickly, especially Tokyo is very vast, very large. Uh, so you end up maybe uh, spending five to ten dollars a day if you do 10 audition that's almost 50 to 100 dollars and it can add up very very quickly so i would say at the beginning maybe if you don't have a lot of experience go to the auditions to gain that experience but uh, after a while try to kind of pick which auditions you want to go to and i would say at one point maybe avoid going to auditions where it's paid less than 15,000 yen, which is about 120, uh, $120 $130. Uh, because if you go there and it's like the money is a bit too small, like you will end up sp uh, spending way more than $100 after a while. So challenge number four is the payments. So um, I'm speaking purely for freelance agencies right now is that they can pay you after one month, two months, or three months, depending on the agency. So that's a really long time before getting your money. Uh, and then if you're in well, at times like with the coronavirus right now, we don't have a lot of jobs to be on that. Now it's starting to pick up, but uh, for like a, a good year, it was very, very, very quiet. Uh, so you need that stable income. So I'd say maybe try to find a part-time job on the side and then uh, do modeling on the side and if you get really good a lot of jobs then go full-time with modeling if you can but um, I'll say try to find a part-time job on the side because the payment are, are very kind of slow uh, and it takes a long time so now some tips um, first tip would be to speak Japanese uh, I know I'm the one saying that and my Japanese is not that great I'm trying to improve like day by day uh, but uh, speaking Japanese will, you know, will help you a lot uh, to land uh, jobs. For example, let's say uh, I give you an example. If you go to an audition and your agent is not there and then no one in the room speaks uh, English, then they will have to explain in Japanese. If you don't understand really well, then you will maybe misinterpret or just don't understand what they want and then it can cost you the job. And uh, maybe there was a job that was really suited for you. So yeah, um, learning your Japanese is, uh, is very important. Uh, I'm the, I'm, I mean, it's probably my biggest weakness, but uh, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. So tip number two would be to take good photos. Um, so you don't need a professional photographer, but if your photos are too basic, then you will never really land a job. Like the client will be like, okay, this too amateur-ish. I don't want to pick that model. So uh, maybe uh, if you have uh, friends who are good at photography, then ask them to take headshots of you, uh, uh, take pictures with uh, different uh, clothes. If you don't know friends who are good at photography, when you arrive in Japan, you can DM on Instagram uh, some photographers and on Facebook as well and sometimes they need models for their uh, portfolio and then you can get the photos for free uh, sometimes you need to pay a little uh, I don't know if it's I'd say like depending on the price then it's worth um, paying photographer but usually they, they 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 want models for their portfolio so the photos are for free so tip number three would be to answer all your emails uh, even if there are jobs that you don't like uh, the, the role or if you're not available just answer that email it will show that you're active that you're professional and they will send you more emails so it's 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 a more job offer sorry so it's it's very important to answer all emails so tip number four would be to be available uh, I know it's a tricky one because if you have a part-time job then you cannot always be available but in the modeling industry it's always at the last moment it's always a uh, kind of weird times in the morning as well they want you to be available for the whole day uh, so if you do have a lot of jobs and you feel like it's a career that you want then maybe go full-time with a modeling agency if you can but uh, the more you're available the more chances you have to uh, land jobs uh, tip number five, and I think the most important tip is to be okay with rejection. I've seen many models um, telling me like, Matt, I go to many auditions and, and then I don't get picked and they take it very personal. Uh, don't take it personally, you know, like uh, the client is looking for someone very specific. So some, sometimes don't be too harsh on yourself. Like uh, even me, myself, I mean, myself, I've been like rejected so many times. I can't even count uh, here in Japan. Sometimes you don't get the job. Sometimes you get the job. It's part of the game. It's a very tough industry. 
uh, and then after you can you can maybe ask your agent or your agency or maybe your friends uh, photographers for feedback and then try to improve and grow uh, uh, as a person and as a model and uh, you know it's like I just want to let you know that it's okay like uh, everybody is uh, is getting re- I mean everybody gets rejected at one point you know so uh, be okay with it don't take it personal and then personally and then just uh, try to get uh, used to it and over it and uh, and then you will do great guys if you have any question please uh, leave a comment uh, I wish I could talk about everything in the modern industry but it's it's kind of uh, difficult uh, you can find a video about uh, auditions here uh, pre-auditions, auditions, receiving emails and post-auditions if you want more things in detail right here. If you want to look at the videos back in 2019, you can also find it here. Um, thank you for watching the video. Uh, leave a comment, uh, like the video, subscribe and activate the bell and I see you guys in the next one. Cheers.